talk about how to deal with negativity of self and others in outside forces of negativity. It's the electron training, how to be a proton, not an electron, how to deal with the electrons of your life with the negativity. Remember, ask questions. We have the Q&A button here. Just go the ahead. Training is being recorded. Go ahead. Welcome to training. Like I said, training today is about how to deal with negativity, the electrons in your life and the electrons inside yourself. David at dmelter.com if you want the exercises or guides from today. Of course, everybody can have my book, ebook, audiobook. I will sign and send and deliver and pay for it. A book for everyone, David at dmelter.com. Ask questions, put your questions into the question tab. Uh, let's get this party rolling. Uh, first, negativity. Uh, exists in the conscious and uh, I have a mechanism I want to teach everyone about negativity it's called cancel clear connect it's in my book connected to goodness it's the core of how the conscious continuum devoids itself of negativity and so I want to work through that to start um, because all that we find outside of us exists inside of us including our negativity those electrons that we want to get rid of uh, and that negative self impression creates the interference between what you already are happy healthy wealthy and worthy it's creating interference between you and the greatest source of light love and lessons and the first thing to realize about negativity is the way the conscious continuum works see we learn via a memory and we have two different memories we have a cellular memory uh, and that's how we build the conscious continuum the things that are repetitive through our senses which are faulty and weak, the way we see things, hear things, smell things, taste things, touch things, if we consistently do it, the memory, that short-term memory of the cellular structure starts inputting that data into our subconscious so that it becomes more systematic as a habit and neural pathway is formed in our subconscious. It becomes one of those 40,000 of the same thoughts. Uh, and then the more we access that uh, electron or positive or proton thought, the more it is an indicator to your quantum being, your epigenetic layer. It speaks to the epigenetic layer of your DNA and it starts activating personality traits, characteristics, obsessions, and addictions that make you you, your quantum being. And so if we surround ourselves with negativity, negative people, negative thoughts, negative podcasts, negative TV shows, negative movies, negative poems, negative energy, soon that's going to pervade the conscious continuum. It's going to continue from the conscious to the subconscious to the unconscious mind and become and manifest itself through personality traits, characteristics, obsessions, and addictions. And we are already programmed uh, Scientifically, they can prove we're programmed already with our positive and negative uh, balance from four generations, great grandparents, grandparents, parents to us. In non-scientific terms, it can be passed down from lifetimes. Whether you believe that or not, it doesn't matter because you have a quantum DNA. You have a quantum nature of personality traits, characteristics, obsessions and addictions that make you, you. So what happens? We surround ourselves with a thought or a person, or an idea, or uh, somebody says something, or you say something, how do we stop that? How do we train ourselves so that the cellular memory doesn't pick it up through our eyes, our nose, our ears, our mouth, and our touch? Simply say cancel. Get into the habit, all my kids say it, get into the habit of canceling out anything negative. If you think of something negative, say cancel. If you hear something negative, say cancel. If you say something negative, say cancel. You don't have to always say it out loud. You can say it in your own head. Cancel. What we're doing is stopping the negative energy from entering that conscious continuum. We're stopping it from being personality traits of ours, characteristics, obsessions, and addictions. We're stopping the interference. We're stopping wasting energy. We're stopping wasting relationships. We're stop wasting the triggers that trigger the ego that create the blood to leave our brain so that we can't use our higher power of thinking. So stop it. Simply cancel it. Now, Sometimes, once is not enough. No matter how much we cancel a thought or what we say or what other people say, it keeps coming back. That's usually indicative 
or a sign that is in your subconscious mind. That means it's one of the 40,000 of the same thoughts. And that's where worrying comes from, resentment, offense, separation, inferiority, superiority. Some of the triggers for anger, for anxiety. Remember, worrying itself is a waste of emotion, energy emotion. Worrying itself is just wishing for what you don't want. But I have taught and thought so many times myself, go, no, don't worry, don't worry. And it keeps coming back. It won't go away. I would say, let it go, let it go, let it go. It won't go away. So if we can't cancel negative energy, then we go ahead and clear ourselves. We clear our mind of that negative energy. And so simply train yourself to say clear. Now, canceling can stop something instantaneously. And if it reoccurs, we now get into the subconscious realm where it takes time. We need to clear these negative thoughts, negative energies from us. And we allow it not to just go away after one time, but to dissipate and dissolve. Uh, so it's a slower process that it takes to shift our subconscious. So the less we access the negativity, the more it will dissipate and dissolve and eventually be replaced by hopefully something more positive, something proactive, a proton instead of electron. And we can do that as long as we have that persistence to keep on canceling and clearing the negative things that come up to us, through us, and for us. Now, there are things that happen in our lives that are quantum. They may have happened in our grandparents, great grandparents' lives or in past lives. Uh, abuse, uh, things that are scarring. Um, and we know that because no matter how much we try to cancel it, how much we try to clear it, it still manifests itself in our personality, our characteristics, our obsessions, and our addictions. For me, you know, I have a quantum nature uh, to oversell or back end sell, uh, to exaggerate. And I have canceled it, I have cleared it, and it still rears its ugly head. And I've come up with a way to shift the energy from negative to positive within the context of my own DNA, within the context of activating and deactivating uh, this energy that I carry, this part of me that makes up my personality, my characteristics, my obsessions and addictions. And I'm still working on those today. And what I do is not only do I clear it, not only do I cancel it, but I connect. I go ahead and utilize the connection I have, reaffirm, recollect, remember and remind what I am and what I'm connected to and through. The greatest source of light, love and lessons. And I use that to heal me. I use that to heal me. How do I do that? Now, don't do this in front of anyone else to think you're crazy. Uh, remember, I do this for myself. It doesn't mean that it's right, it's true, it works. It only works for me and it has no risk and it has no cost. Uh, so if you wanna try it and see if it works for you, I highly encourage it because it has no risk and it works for me. And I hope it has no risk and works for you as well. So for me, what I do is I think about and picture myself overselling, back end selling, manipulating, exaggerating. I go ahead and picture that and I try to find a light in it and say to myself, you know, I am worthy that these are humankind issues, that the faultiness of humankind is forgiven. And I try to find a light in it. And I actually picture it with my eyes closed, me exaggerating that I find a light and I, I cover it. It doesn't matter what size of light, what intensity of light, what color of light, just find a light because light vibrates the fastest like lessons in truth. And if you cover it with that light, you then in the same mind's eye can put something that holds the light much easier. Something that is naturally quantum in your nature that you naturally love. So I'll picture, you know, my family, my wife, my children, I'll picture football, uh, I'll picture uh, bananas fosters, you know, something that just innately within my quantum being that I love. And I'll take the light that I club covered over exaggerating Dave, and I go ahead and cover it with my banana fosters Dave as well. Now I have a big light in front of me covering exaggerating Dave with banana fosters Dave, and I see it in front of me, this big light. And then I go ahead and connect myself to that light. I feel that light and I bring within the mind's eye that light over me. So now present Dave, exaggerating Dave, 
Banana Foster's Dave are all held within the same light. And what I do at that moment is I hold the light until I feel a shift in energy. I feel my energy actually shift. And once again, this isn't a one-time cancel. It's not a several times clear. It is a lifetime journey of dissipating and dissolving a natural quantum energy, a natural belief within your own DNA and activating and deactivating those personality traits, characteristics, obsessions, and addictions that you want. And when you start to get into touch with the energy that you are and the frequency that you carry, you can then strengthen that frequency. You can widen the spectrum of its messaging and you can go ahead and clear clear apply that frequency into more and more positivity. Use cancel, clear, and connect in order to control the negativity that you allow inside of your conscious continuum. Utilize your conscious mind to cancel it, your subconscious mind to clear it, and your unconscious competency to shift the light with cancel, clear, connect. Now, one of the other components beyond Cancel, Clear, Connect, and that is in my book, like I said, anyone wants my book, just ebook, audio book, I will sign the book, send it to you, pay for shipping, david at dmelter.com. If there's any questions you have, load them up in the q and I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, we'll save some time for questions as always. If you want to re-listen to this, all of the, the trainings are on all the platforms, the playbook, one of the top podcasts in the world now, just listen to uh, the replays as well. Now, I want to understand what happens to, with negative energy. Negative energy are triggers, right? Negative ideas, podcasts, movies, TV shows, negative people. Uh, all of the negative things that can come about are triggers. And what does it trigger? It triggers the ego. It triggers the primal ego that we have. And the ego, as you all know, is the need for us to fight, to flee, to run away to feed scarcity, there, we're, we're, there's not enough, or to the other F word that Gary B says. What happens when we're in ego is the blood leaves our brain, rendering us useless of using our higher power of thinking because the blood goes to our body so we can fight, flee, fight, or the F, F word, and instead of being in the brain where we can actually utilize it with the higher power of thinking. So these negative things trigger the ego uh, and so we have to learn to identify what those represent in our life. Does it represent a need to be separate? Does it represent a need to be worthy of inferiority, that I'm not as good as other you're else, I'm not worthy of it, or superiority, I'm better than you, or anxious, frustrated, or angry, depressed? Does it represent a need to be offended, one that I still work quantumly on using Cancel Clear Connect? These triggers, uh, guilty, all of these triggers put us into an ego-based consciousness, rendering the conscious, subconscious, and unconscious mind, forming habits and characteristics and personality traits, obsessions and addictions that we don't want, utilizing negative behavior in the favor of spiraling and self-sabotage, so what do we do? Once we identify these triggers, we identify the negative energy, the negative person in the negative podcast, stop. Don't fight it. What you resist persists. Don't fight it at all. Just simply stop. Breathe through your nose, out through your mouth. Remind yourself. Remember. Recollect yourself with that great source of light, love, and lessons to those five daily practices. Stop and think about what you want, who can help you or who you can help, how you can get it done with productivity, accessibility, and gratitude, how you and what you should do now. Remember, until you can get a stage of a prioritization, you don't know what, who, and how. If you don't know what your prioritization for, is, for the day is, you have not understood your what, your who, and your how. So how can you do things now? Remember, 100% of the things you do now get done, separating you from everyone else, meaning what? Successful people get stuff done and 100% of the things you do now get done. So go ahead, get to the stage of prioritization. Let you know and confirm you know your what, your who, and your how. Then you can apply your why by getting to center. So we stop knowing our what, or who, and our how, 
when we get to a stage of prioritization, we now know how to act. Acting is the only way to change the way we feel. Thinking about how we feel, using logic will never change the way we feel. Acting is, that's why I always say, be kind to your future self. Do, right, act, do good deeds. Because if you are in a trigger state, if you are around negativity, you cannot outthink it. You need to do something, cancel, clear, connect. You need to take action. And if you don't get to the stage of prioritization, you don't know what you're doing, your how, you can't apply your why. So what do we do? We trigger ourselves, we recognize it, recollect it, remind it and remember it. And then we realize acknowledge and acquire the knowledge in order to effectuate our why to roll in the right direction. Remember, when you are triggered, your mind, your body, and soul are on fire. Everybody knows when you're on fire, you got to stop, you got to drop, and you got to roll. Now, you have to realize that the lens, quote unquote, we view life through may be distorted, right? When we believe we see with our eyes, instead of understanding, we give meaning to everything we see, that we view things that may not be reality. I have wasted so much time, money, emotions, and relationships thinking that I understood what I saw. Our minds have a way of convincing us of things that aren't necessarily accurate. We have to be willing to question and challenge our own thoughts. Uh, you can go ahead and YouTube there is a uh, Iowa State perception test. You can YouTube this about a gorilla. And it's amazing, the first time that I saw it, there's three basketball players in white t-shirts and three basketball players in black t-shirts. And they ask people to watch the video of how many times the ball is passed. And uh, the white team has the ball and they're passing the ball and you're counting how many times. And at the end, they ask you how many times the ball was passed. And believe it or not, most people don't get that right because what we see is distorted. It's not accurate. Our senses are weak. The way we see things, smell things, taste things, hear things, and touch things are not aligned in one with everything in reality. And so they can't even get the numbers right. But here's the kicker. To teach the lessons of how we distort the truth, the next question is, is did you see the gorilla? And so when you go through this exercise, you'll be amazed how you didn't see the gorilla, which I did. I thought it was a trick. It's an amazing video. Check it out on YouTube, the Iowa uh, gorilla test of perception. Um, here's some questions to ask ourselves though, uh, to figure out uh, what distorted perception or meaning we're giving to things. So I want you to think about these questions and, and ask yourself these questions. Do I see everything as black or white with no in between? Am I starting to make sweeping generalizations about people or situations? Do I assume the worst possible outcome at all times? Do I blow small events out of proportion? Do I fail to see the positive side of situations? Do I personalize the actions or comments that are made from others if I have no proof that the others have those accurate assumptions? Do I have a crystal ball? None of us and our mind, our thoughts are ours alone. Do I have a problem or conflict with someone in several areas of my life? Who is the common denominator of all of my problems? We all know the answer to that. Avoid judging yourself and others. Judgment and conditions placed upon anyone or anything are made from uh, partial information based off of arrogance, ignorance, doubt, and fear. Don't complain and don't worry. Complaining is asking for what you don't want. Worry is wishing for it. Don't engage in gossip. It is toxic, toxic and divisive. It only defines you as someone that is basing reality off of partial information, off of judgment and condition. Find gratitude, forgiveness, and accountability, which will bring inspiration and satisfaction into your life. Gratitude will give you that perception to find the light, the love, and the lessons, to allow you to cancel, clear, connect. Forgiveness will allow you to shift your energy by forgiving yourself 
and meshing in the energy of what you don't like about yourself, what you love about yourself, and who you are. And accountability will give you control of the entire situation by asking yourself two simple questions. What did I do to attract this to myself? What am I supposed to learn from it? Living in spirit, inspired through yourself with forgiveness, gratitude, and accountability. If none of these things work, get help. Get professional help. If you can't control the negativity, if you can't cancel Clear Connect, if you're not finding and identifying the triggers and stop dropping and rolling and living in fire with interference between you and the greatest source of light, love, and lessons, then seek help. There are so many professionals out there that can help you and guide you through all of these different things. That is how we deal with negative energy within ourselves, but how do we deal with negative people? People that we're born into the same house with, that we sit next to at work, or activity I get paid for is the way I like to say it. How do we deal with negative circumstances that surround us? Can we change other people with negative energy? This wastes so much time and energy. The number one way to deal with negative people is to detach yourself. Remember that the way people act has nothing to do with you. Why allow somebody else's experience and their journey offend you? You need to detach yourself if possible. Detach yourself through understanding, through utilizing the great chain of feeding to understand and forgive, understand and pray for their happiness, which will create an appreciation of how similar you are and the differences that you have. Live above the line. Live above the line. Don't live in blame, shame, and justification when living in other people's negativity. It'll just infuse and inf infuriate others if we go to blame, shame, and justification. Be accountable. Ask yourself, what did I do? Don't live in liability. Live in accountability. What am I supposed to learn from it? Let's look for the lessons together to live above the line. See what part you're playing in the perception to understand negativity and devoid yourself, dissolve it, and detach yourself from that negativity. Response is a big part. Right? I always say you only get one action in the day, and that's to wake up. Everything else is a reaction to what happens. And so, just like we refocus, we react. And one of the things that we have to understand is we have to react in neutral. We have to react by stopping, not by resisting, not by accelerating in the wrong direction, not by creating void shortages and obstacles, not by creating more fire in a situation, but to react calmly, at center, at peace by stopping, by using the higher power of thinking, not allowing ourselves to go into an ego-based consciousness, into the primal fears that exist that take the blood from our higher power of thinking. But we just need to stay <laughs> calm and react and stop, drop, and roll. Leave the blood in your brain, and if your blood's leaving your brain, put it back in your brain so you can use your higher power of thinking. Remember, we want to react the way that you would want someone to react to you. So it's very easy to ask ourselves and understand how we're reacting and pray for the happiness of the other person, which is how I would like people to respond to me in that calm and focused manner. One of the other things, it's kind of like the trust uh, in that problem, is that counterintuitive to all of the Zen Buddhist type of understanding of negativity, there has to be some persistence. Where, where is the persistence involved? And the persistence involved is knowing your boundaries. That you need to be firm, and the place that you need to be persistent is within the context of your boundaries. And in that boundaries, you need to start defining people in a variance of a spectrum of how much they feed you positively and how much they bleed you negatively. And if somebody's feeding you positive, you feed them more positive. If they're bleeding you, you can allow them to fall away through understanding forgiveness and praying for their happiness, or even being firm by firing the negative energy from your life. You need to find the positive, identify what gives you that positive energy, and utilize it within the variant spectrum of bleeding and feeding of positive and negative energy in order to effectuate which level of attention and intention you're going to give to it. 
Be peaceful and smile through the whole process. Bring your positivity. Don't forget that your interactions are opportunities to elevate others. Your interactions with others are planting seeds that, although you may never sit under trees, that you may never sit under, they are an opportunity for you to seek and be your higher self by understanding and praying for happiness, by elevating others to elevate yourself. When you understand and forgive and pray for someone else's happiness, you can have no need to be offended. It's so easy. Many people uh, to me are like garbage trucks. They run around full of trash, full of negative energy, full of frustration, full of anger, anxiety, fear, worry, disappointment, frustration. And as the garbage piles up, as the trash piles up, they look for what? They look for a place to dump it. They look for a place and if you let them, they're gonna dump their trash on you. A great form of projection, the needs of the ego, People cannot find outside of themselves what they can't find inside of themselves. And if you let that garbage build up, if you are not aware of yourself, if you are not canceling, clearing, and connecting, if you're not utilizing all the tools that we have talked about to stop, drop, and roll, you will be dumping on others. But worse, you will allow other people to dump on you. When someone's dumping on you, the best thing you can ask them is, tell me how you feel. Don't have to get defensive, you can stay vulnerable and stay understanding, forgiving and full of love and be able to react in the appropriate manner to show and illustrate what is inside of you. The best way to do so is to ask, how do you feel? Why do you feel that way? Tell me how you feel. Instead of, that's not true, we can't do that. Tell me how you feel, because if we can get someone to have an open mind, an open heart, an open hands, to tell us emotionally what they're feeling, we then can find out what they like and what they don't like. We can see how we can provide service or value to them and say, would it help you if I did this for you? Would it help you if I did that? And also, we could empower them and make them feel good by asking them, do you know one that can help me? Because the best way to make us feel better is to take action, right? Not logic. Thoughts are not going to change the way we feel. Actions will. And the best action that we can take is to do something for someone else. To do good deeds. Which is why my favorite statement is to be kind to your future self and do good deeds. To be able to understand, pray for happiness and forgiveness all at once. To be able to not only clear the connection between you and everybody else, but clear the connection of everything. All the positivity becomes the key component, the dominant variable that we allow that interference to clear away. If we can do this, we will know not only how to deal with negative people, but deal with the negative energy that surrounds us, inherent upon us in the conscious, subconscious, and unconscious. We need to control that atmosphere using the five daily practices, cancel, clear, connect, Go ahead, reach out to me, david at dmeltzer.com. I will send you those. I will send you the Cancel Clear Connect. I will send you the ebook, audio book. I'll sign my book and ship it to you. David at dmeltzer.com. Fill up the Q&A on IG. On, uh, we have over 50,000 people registered for this training. And on Clubhouse, I'm going to take a question here online. And uh, who's going to be first up on Clubhouse? Uh, we are looking at... Christina Madrigal, you'll come up after I take this question. Here we go. <clears throat> I'm. It's still pitch dark here in your tomorrow. That must be down under. Still very excited to make it on the call today. Not getting any sound. These look like comments, not questions. How do you deal with repetitive negative thoughts? Um, so the repetitive negative thoughts are either within the context of the subconscious or the unconscious. And so just to repeat myself, we're going to use cancel, clear, connect. Canceling out the negative thought initially, if it repeats itself, we're going to try to clear our mind. If it doesn't clear, we're going to utilize that connection exercise that I told you to picture what's bothering you. Find the light, the love, and the lessons in it. Picture something else that innately within your unconscious being you love. Create a ball of light between those two. Bring that ball of light, put it over you, and hold it there until you actually 
quantitatively find your energy shifting and practice that day after day and you will change your quantum personality traits, characteristics and obsessions. You will shift your energy. You will start attracting those things that exist within the frequency that you are. All right, we are all ready to go. Our next guest, Christina Madrigal, you have a question for me. I love this training. This is so great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. How can I help you? All right, so my question is, I've been playing around with this, uh, the, the two words, pride and um, confidence. And I was curious, and even within the context of negativity, um, been working with you for a long time, you and your team, y'all are wonderful. And my self-worth and my self-confidence is like really getting stronger and stronger. And I'm super happy and I love it, so thank you. How do I make sure that I don't go into the realm of, 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 of pride or negativity or um, I want to be able to expand and serve, not expand and be like, um, you know, holier than thou, if you will. So thank you so much. No, oh, thank you. That's a great question. So, and I've lived that in myself and, you know, as I grew accelerated and learned, uh, I started to believe my own BS and started to create interference between me and all the great things that I had. And I took, stopped taking stock in who I was and what I wanted to become. And so if we remember the way that confidence uh, exists, it's through clarity of what we want, balancing uh, the who and how with the what we want and determining our prioritization of what activity we want to utilize, activity we have planned, don't have planned, activity uh, that we get paid for, don't get paid for, our sleep, but whatever it may be, we need clarity and then balance to focus or prioritize what it is that we are going to do to get what we want. And if you stay in the realm of clarity, balance, and focus, you will be confident and then utilizing stop, drop, and roll to identify when we're interfering between us and what we want when we're interfering between the what the who and the how and our now is not aligned with the what the who and the how if our now is misaligned with it that means we've created voids shortages obstacles and interference and therefore we need to cancel clear connect stop drop and roll identify what those triggers are put the blood back into our brain all the things we've been teaching and training is utilized within the understanding that Confidence is created through clarity, balance, and focus of what, who, and how to determine our now. Remember, if we're in the prioritization stage, that means we understand and have taken inventory of our what, our who, and our how, which allows us what? To apply our why. Uh, and when we're applying our why, we're in the enjoyment of the consistent every day, persistent without quit, pursuit of our own potential, our greater self, our higher self, our best self, according to what we want. Not what other people want, not what they don't want, not what's missing, but what we want. Vote for what you want and it'll get elected into your life. What a great question. Get balanced, stay clear, balanced and focused and stay confident and pride will only be a minute and moment interference to what you already are. Thank you so much, Christina. Awesome. All right, we'll take another question online. I have the unbelievable next up guest, the Paradigm Shift IG Live partner of mine every Saturday, an incredible coaching client of mine as well. Craig Siegel, let me answer one question online and I'll get right to you and your powerful self, says the articulate alligator, the energetic enigma, and the spiritual starfish, all in one. Here we go. Can being negative ever lead to a positive outcome? Yes, because fear and negativity is a motivator. It gets you up, gets you back up, gets you started and gets you back started. Those are positive outcomes in the short term. But negativity and fear, uh, these are long-term things that create interference between you and inspiration, being in spirit. So if you're looking for a short-term boost, you can use negative energy, negative input, in order to get up, get back up, get started, get back started, but you better clear that negativity in order to be inspired because negativity will get you up, get you back up, get you started, get you back started, but it's not gonna get you there. Inspiration, in spirit will get you there through gratitude, forgiveness, accountability, and of course, 
inspiration, effective communication, allowing us to use those five daily practices we keep repeating at knowing your what, your who, your how, your now, and of course, applying your why. Happy to give all those to you. Just email me, david at dmeltzer.com. Ebook, audiobook, I'll sign it, book, I'll send it to you, I'll ship it, I'll pay for it. All right. So let's use negativity in the short term for those short term positive outcomes, but focus in on clearing the interference for inspiration. If you have not followed Craig Siegel, he is an inspiration. He's the only one I know that has maybe even more clear energy than anyone I know. Craig Siegel, welcome to our Friday training on how to deal with negativity. I'm doing great. The passionate panda bear, the ferocious Buddha, the spiritual starfish, the articulate applesauce alligator. What you got question wise for me, Craig, your boy? I, I'm obsessed with you. Dave, why is it such a slippery slope and easy to create bad habits? Why do so many people do that? And what's one way we could prevent that? Yeah, well, Cancel Clear Connect is one way to prevent negative agonists because we don't want them to be inputted into our cellular structure, our cellular memory. So we want to make sure that we catch or identify negative behavior because time or slippery slope works in the negative behavior's favor. See, the reason it works in the negative behavior's favor and why there's a slippery slope is that when we do negative things or surround us with negative situations, people, places, podcasts, and purposes, uh, we don't expect negative results. See, we always expect things will be okay, that we can handle the drinking, the drugs, the non-exercise, the bad food, until it's too late. That's because things accelerate and grow and aggregate upon themselves. There's something called compound interest. Einstein talks about the rule of 72, how things keep duplicating within the process of 1% of a negative or a positive will turn into a, a 72 point segmentation, allowing you not to realize that it takes 90% of the time before you even realize that you're 25% in the negative or the positive. And so it's a slippery slope because negative behavior, negative habits don't have an expectation of a negative result. Where positive behavior always has an expectation of positive results. So we want it to come faster than it really can. And we're not willing to do the long work. We're willing to do the hard work, but not the long work to make it happen. So that when it takes 90% of the time to see 25% of the results in a negative situation, it's a slippery slope. In a positive situation, it's an uphill climb. And so people like the slippery slope better than the uphill climb. And it's such a dangerous thing to allow your system of conscious, subconscious, and unconscious mind to feed itself with the negativity. Remember, negative energy is just like food. You know, if you eat Happy Meals every day, you're going to feel sick. If you eat it once in a while, that's fine. If you eat it every day, you're going to be sick. Just like if you take in negative energy every day, you're going to be sick. So figure out what you're allowing into that cellular memory, into the neural pathways of the subconscious mind, into your DNA, your quantum nature, your personality traits, characteristics, obsessions, and addictions, and listen to and be aware of all the different triggers that start the process of what? negativity or positivity. My friend Craig Siegel, the CLS experience. My friend Craig Siegel, IG Live every Saturday, normally around 8.15 or so a.m. Pacific time. Thank you so much for your question. I love you. Follow Craig Siegel. Love you so much, Big Dave. I'll see you tomorrow morning. See you tomorrow morning. So will everyone else. All right, I'm going to take another question online as Rachel Garcia gets ready uh, on Clubhouse for our next questions. I want to once again thank everybody so much for joining us if you need anything it's david at dmeltzer.com next question online started my business in the coffee industry and getting down on myself not building accounts so here once again you have to continue to enjoy the consistent persistent pursuit of your happiness take inventory of your values every day your personal experiential giving and receiving values and then ask for help see who sits in a situation that you want to be in and go ahead you know ask ask you can't ask often enough or big enough or you know huge enough in person, on the phone, via email, media, traditional, social media, whatever it may be, you've got 
to ask. So when you started that coffee industry and you're getting down on yourself, that is just creating interferences, voids, and shortages. Don't get down on yourself. Get up and ask. Don't get down on yourself. Get up and do the activity that makes and prioritizes the best opportunities that you have according to your daily inventory of what, who, how, and now. Apply that why every day when you're getting down. Just spend minutes and moments in that interference, that negativity, anxiety, that fear. Minutes and moments because remember, once you start identifying when you're feeling down, you can go ahead and execute on asking for help, finding someone that sits in the situation that can help you. Go ahead and take action to change the way you feel. Thank you so much. All right, next up, Rachel. Hello, David. It's wonderful to talk to you today. I just enjoy you immensely. Thank you. <laughs> and hey, Craig. <laughs> Jake. Hi. We got the whole team. Um, I, my question was that. I said we got the whole team for you. <laughs> I know. I'm so excited. Now I'm like, what question should I ask? Like, I have all of you here. Um, my question, I guess, is about mindset. And um, what do you do besides your five daily um, activities to really get your mindset going in, in the morning. Yeah. So my morning, uh, starts at 9 PM the night before. And so the first thing to effectuate a strong mindset is to have an unwinding routine. See what we want to do is make sure that we're plateauing and growing when we awake, uh, when the sun rises. Uh, and so, you know, if I want to make sure that I'm up at 4 AM, I'm starting my unwinding routine at 9 PM putting my mind, my body, and my soul in the best position, not only to recover, but to plateau and grow, to not only recover the physical realm of my body, but to clear any interference, any negativity, so that I can maximize uh, that conscious, subconscious, and unconscious connection that occurs during sleep with the greatest source of light, love, and lessons. I utilize this unwinding routine so that I can then wake up meditate for 20 minutes to transcend the information that I received through my sleep to reach a higher self, a higher place. See, most people, they start their day at the bottom of the hill and they work their way up to the top of the hill just to find themselves at the bottom of the hill. Again, uh, Camus wrote about this in the book called The Stranger, called The Myth of Sisyphus, right? Rolling that boulder to the top of the hill, just have it roll down. When you utilize an unwinding routine, when you start your day, when your tomorrow starts today at 9 p.m. or whatever time it is for you, you are able not only to put your body into a place of recovery, but your mind and soul into a place of connectivity without any interference, being able to clear the downloads that are coming to you of the abundant nature of the universe. You're allowed to live and can live in between limitlessness and infinity, bringing the clarity, the balance, and the focus, and the confidence that we talked about early, or elevating your awareness so that you can make better decisions to maximize your productivity, accessibility, and gratitude, to be more efficient, effective, and statistically successful by having control of not only your mindset, but also your heart set and that conscious continuum that we're talking about in order to effectuate positive energy into your life, a positive, expansive learning of a journey that enjoys the consistent, persistent pursuit of your potential. So utilize an unwinding routine, utilize meditation to transcend the information, not to necessarily clear information, and then act upon it throughout the five daily practices in your day to effectively get what you want more rapidly and accurately, better known as manifestation. Rachel, I see you everywhere. I appreciate you. I hope that answered your questions. It's definitely, yes. You, you always answer my questions. You, Craig, you guys are just amazing. I love Saturday mornings. Let's go. Let's go. Thank you so much. LFG, as Tom Brady says. All right. LFG, thank you so much. I'm going to take another question online and then Coco, please get ready. Uh, we'd love to have you come up next and ask the next question. Uh, question online. What triggers your ego most often? I would have to say, knowing myself and in this journey for almost 17 years now, the need to be offended most often triggers my ego. I don't know why I have to let other people's experiences, I don't know why I have to let other people's journeys 
create interference in my life. I have no idea why I have a need to be offended because somebody in my activity I get paid for does something or a family member says something or somebody doesn't show up to something. I don't know why their experience has any effect on me and my ego. I don't know why I have a need to be offended. But I will tell you that I wish I could feed the world with food as easy as my ego gets fed with the need to be offended. I walk outside sometime with the need to be offended and boom, it hit me right in the face. I wish food delivery came that fast. You got to work on the needs of the ego, the separations, the inferiorities, the superiorities. You have to start practicing identifying and spending minutes and moments in ego-based consciousness triggered by those needs, like the need to be offended, right, separate, inferior, superior, anxious, frustrated, angry, guilty, resentful, whatever they may be. But for me, the biggest trigger is the need to be offended. And I'd like to ask for forgiveness from all of you, as well as my family, friends, and associates for me being human and having that need to be offended. I think that all of these triggers are a indication of a blend between humankind and truth, and that there is absolutely a separation between humankind and truth. We are always pursuing the truth, uh, and the way that we pursue the truth is we have to fall back with faith and allow the truth to present itself in our clear, balanced, and focused awareness. All right, thank you so much for that question. Coco, you're up next. Hello. Um, it's an honor and a privilege to be in this room with so many like minds. I didn't have a question, and then I was searching for a question, but I think I have something that I would like to share. Um, one of the things that I do when I get offended is I say ego dissolve. And when I say ego dissolve, my desire to let somebody know that they have offended me kind of dissipates and melts away and I'm able to go into my heart and then go into and feel that person and understand from a compassionate place where, where it's coming from. And so my need to say something or to let them know that my sin, it just disappears because I begin to see the whole person and to see myself and see where it's generated from. And if I'm still feeling any, it usually dissolves right away and melts away but to somebody that I've had some ties to, some trauma bonds and things, and I'm being revisited from that old space, I say a forgiveness prayer. Um, such as so-and-so, please forgive me for causing harm to you by body, speech, and mind. May we be free from indemnity, pain, and suffering. May we have true happiness. Such as so-and-so, I forgive you for causing harm to me by body, speech, and mind. May we be free from indemnity, pain, and suffering. May we have true happiness. Coco, please forgive me for causing harm to you by body, speech, and mind. May we be free from indemnity, pain, and suffering. May we have true happiness. And sharing that, um, if that is something that somebody wants, I can text it to you so, or, or um, put it, put it inbox it to you. The yeah, whole please trip. email, email that. Work. Email me that prayer because I love it. David at dmelter.com and I'll send you my book as well right back at you so we can share the great strength and light and love and lessons that we've learned together in order to effectuate the minutes and moments that we are spending between humankind and truth and the ego. And I love to be in that effort as you are to dissolve the ego the best that we can. And when it does rear its ugly head to dissolve it again using such great faithful prayers and mindset focus and refocus in order to effectuate it. Coco, absolute genius. Thank you so much for that prayer. And I'll look forward to seeing your email, david at dmelter.com. All right. Thank you. Have an amazing day. You are amazing. It's already happened. Thank you so much. It's done. It's done. It's done. I'm going to take another question online as our friend Nick Glazer is up next. Thank you so much, Nick, for having a great question for me. Question online, <clears throat> what's the difference between being a negative person versus just being critical? Well, the actual bio, biometrics of a human being is impossible to be completely negative, number one. So, uh, you know, to be a negative person is to have a negative mindset. Uh, and to be critical is instances of... Uh, not negative mindset. Uh, being critical of someone is pointing out 
through judgment and condition based off of personal evidence, arrogance, ignorance, doubt, and fear, projecting upon others what we may see as separate, inferior, or superior, uh, what actually is just our perception. Uh, and so we need to forgive those that are critical of us. I think we'd use Coco's prayer for the critical people in our lives that are putting judgments and conditions on us based off of, you know, incomplete information on arrogance, ignorance, fear, and doubt. Uh, and so that's where forgiveness comes in so much that in some varying degree, everyone has negativity in them. Uh, there are, are no wholly negative people. Uh, we have negative situations, circumstances, and conditions and judgments that exist between people that we are most relative to, and we get conditioned almost habitually to have a negative relationship where we're focused in on what we don't want in other people. You know, I give an example about my own wife. Uh, you know, I used to look for the wrong things in my wife, and when I got those things, I saw our relationship as negative or her as negative. The minute I was able to look within myself and heal it and forgive it and look for the superpowers, even things that I was critical about of my wife, even things that, as you say in you know common vernacular, that bug the crap out of me, uh, now I love, I adore. Things that I completely you know just couldn't stand uh, because of my own self, my own mindset, I now find attractive, I find adoring, I find beautiful because I'm looking for what I want, not only within myself and loving myself, but also loving her and looking for everything I want in her and having the right perception and mindset of how blessed I am in this relationship. There are no negative people. People that are critical are just defining themselves with whatever critical thoughts they have based off of incomplete evidence incomplete information that is based upon arrogance and ignorance, doubt and fear. Instead, I want to clear that interference, clear that doubt, clear that fear, clear the arrogance and ignorance, and work within truth and love by enjoying that consistent, persistent pursuit of my potential, focusing in on what I do want, not what I don't want or what's missing. All right, here we go. Nick Glazer, our last guest online. What question do you have for me? Happy Friday, everyone. Thanks for having me, Jake and Dave. I really appreciate it. Um, my question for you today is, if you have like a friend, family member, colleague that is stuck in ego-based consciousness and they're super close-minded in the sense that they can't see the light, love, and lessons in life, how can you help open that mind or help them kind of refresh, get back to center, and accept um, all the light, love, and lessons that we have available? Well, remember, it takes a thousand times the energy to re-engineer, convince the closed mind that it does an open one. And so when we can determine if someone has a closed mind, a closed heart, or closed hands, uh, that it may not be the right place in the perfect time to try to re-engineer that. And so what we want to do in those situations, allow those people to fall away for the time being, or even fire them from our lives from the time being, understand by asking them why they feel that way or how do they feel, and praying for their happiness, using Coco's prayer that she had given us, praying for their happiness through understanding, praying for their higher self and their being. And although you may not know that you've had any effect, you may be planting seeds under a tree that you may never sit under. You may have a point in context or time where what you have taught, said, done, or asked will have an effect. It may be a month later, a year later, or 10 years later, but somebody and someone at the frequency that's more receptive for them or the time that's more receptive when they have an open mind, an open heart, and open hands, when they're able to receive. There are so many times in my life I was not able to receive. You know, my father told me I was just like him when I was 30. I wasn't able to receive it. My father told me I was just like him. In fact, he gave me a jacket with no pockets to remind me I was just like him, that money doesn't buy love and happiness, that you can't take anything with you when you're gone. And then I basically responded to him and told him to F off, I hate you, you're a liar, a cheater, manipulator, overseller, backhand seller, I want nothing to do, I wasn't ready to hear it. But then six years later, my best friend Rob, who I invited to the masters to go with me first class 
with not only all the money in the world, but the access that I had to the backseat scenes of the cabins and the media center and the celebrities, athletes, entertainers, millionaires, billionaires, and entrepreneurs, taking him, my best friend from the fourth grade, to me, with me, to the masters. And he told me that he didn't want to go, that I was surrounding myself with the wrong people, the wrong ideas. I was doing the wrong things. He didn't like what I was doing or who I was doing it with. I wasn't ready to hear it then. And I wasn't here ready to hear my wife tell me that I wasn't paying attention to my family. I wasn't paying attention to the activity I get paid for, which other people call work. I wasn't taking stock in who I was, living to my higher potential. When she told me that, I wasn't ready to hear it. I went to blame, shame, and justification all three times. Right? Blame, shame. I lived in liability. I took no accountability until I instituted gratitude to give me that perspective, forgiveness to give me that peace, and accountability to give me control of my mindset, my heart set, and my conscious continuum. No matter what my dad said, no matter what my best friend said, no matter what my wife said, I was not ready. But all three of them planted seeds. Until that day came when I looked at that jacket that my dad gave me years and years ago. And I realized I don't hate my dad. I don't hate my best friend, Rob. I don't hate my wife. I hate myself. It all came to me with three seeds that were planted over a decade of time in order to institute a change of a closed mind to an open mind, a closed heart to an open heart, closed hands to open hands. Effectuating a transformation that has allowed me to be on a mission the last 17 years to empower others, to empower others, simply to be happy, to make more money, help more people, and have more fun in our lives. If it was not for the seeds that my father, my best friend, and my wife planted, there would be no tree to sit under. And I am so grateful for their patience and understanding. I am so grateful for the seeds that they planted, even though I wasn't ready. So Nick, keep planting those seeds. Remember, it takes a thousand times the energy to convince a closed mind that it does one open one. So go ahead, plant the seeds, utilize gratitude, forgiveness, and accountability. Utilize understanding. Utilize the ability, as Coco has, the prayers of happiness and empowerment. I am so grateful for everyone. Uh, next week's topic for training is stop lying to yourself. Perfect for that last answer. We want to remind you that the hour-long two-minute drill premieres in two weeks on Friday, June 18th. It's an incredible show on Amazon Prime Video. Check it out on June 18th, two-minute drill, hour-long. We have unbelievable guests, $50,000 of cash and prizes each episode. You can go ahead and apply for season three. We will be filming that in November, so please apply as well. If you want uh, the exercise about how to deal with negativity today, if you want the five daily practices, or you want my book, ebook, audiobook, or you want me to sign a book, send it to you, pay for it, and ship it, not a problem. David at dmelzer.com. It's in the notes. David at dmelzer.com. Remember, everyone, most importantly, be kind to your future self and do good deeds. Thank you.